Hello, ladies and a few good men. Welcome to today's podcast episode of Autoimmune Rehab, where, as always, you can find and download show notes and listen to all episodes at autoimmunerehab.com. Today's episode is sponsored by my free 30 day self care journal template that you can access at annalarabrown.com backslash self care. Okay, with no further ado, let's get started with today's episode where we are going to be talking about all about how to embrace change, embracing changes, and some of the trends in food and different things like that, which of course are really important topics when you find out that you have an autoimmune disorder and you begin this journey. Of course, you're all going to be about embracing changes. So let's welcome today's guest, Christiane Schroeder. I think I said the name correctly. So Christiane, welcome to today's podcast. Tell, start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, hello there. I'm so happy to be here. And thank you so much for having me, Anna Laura. My name is Christiana Schröter. I live in California. I'm a professor here. I teach food marketing. I'm also a health and happiness coach. And I also teach innovation entrepreneurship. So the interlap intersection, if you think of these like a Venn diagram or the food marketing, the innovation entrepreneurship, and the health and happiness is actually leading to this wonderful topic today, which is this changing and embracing changes. Absolutely. So let's start off by having you answer this first question. So what would you say would be the most important thing that somebody should keep in mind when they say, okay, I'm starting this journey with this autoimmune, you know, all these health issues, and I've got to embrace changes. What would be the first thing that would come to mind there, the first step that you think somebody should take? Very good. Yeah. So what I would definitely suggest is keeping an open mind. Sometimes we're very resilient when we hear, oh, certain things need to change with regard to our diet, with regard to the way that we lead our life. So keep an open mind and maybe even try different things. So with regard to trends, it could be that one food trend really resonates with you. So for instance, it's going to be in 2024, we're going to see much more plant-based foods. Maybe you're meeting some plant-based foods that really resonate with you and some other ones, maybe not. So for instance, with an autoimmune disorder, what we frequently see is that maybe soy-based product lead to a lot of um, maybe your body not digesting them easily, right? So it could be bloating, could be digestive issues because you're very sensitive to that. So maybe try some different plant-based foods. So tempeh is another one. Um, there are some other new ones that are coming out that are incorporating more grains that are easier to digest than maybe soy-based products. So plant-based doesn't necessarily always mean that it contains soy. There are lots of other sources. So again, the first step is really keeping an open mind and trying different things and seeing what works for you with your particular autoimmune disorder. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Yeah. And the other thing I find to keep in mind with things like plant-based stuff is a lot of times you're better off. And this is true even of gluten-free, of grain-free, of any kind of diet, if you want to categorize it as that, especially when you have, I mean, not even just, just autoimmune disorders, but especially with autoimmune disorders, you're better off eating, you know, the actual plants themselves, the fruits, the vegetables, the whole foods, and not some of this plant-based substitute things or these gluten-free substitutes because a lot of times they're very highly processed they add soy like you said they add sugar they add all kinds of things into the food that are just really not good for you anyway so you know that's a great suggestion and um maybe you know going along the lines of trying new things maybe try new vegetables that you haven't tried before like now with the fall season it could be you're trying some different squash that you haven't tried before which is a really amazing way to maybe you could puree some squash into a tomato sauce and enrich that a little bit more, make it more filling. I've even like added pumpkin into smoothies and that's really easy to digest. Pumpkin has actually some enzymes in there that help break down different foods that you have eaten. So they start the digestion process really early and it's very soothing to your stomach too, really good for your skin. So as you say, try to stick as close to the raw food as possible. Um, try to figure out how many ingredients are in this. Can I maybe pronounce all the ingredients or are there some in there that seem to be like pure chemicals and really keep an open mind to trying new foods or new fruits, vegetables. 
For sure, absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely a must. And what other additional tips would you have for somebody who's trying to embrace changes, maybe maybe diet related, maybe not even related to diet, maybe just related to, like you said, a lot of your health coaching is around health and happiness. What other kind of tips would you share with people? Well, um, you know, as you're kind of struggling and maybe you're looking for new ways, my biggest recommendation is you need to be really patient with yourself, need to have a lot of grace. So nothing will happen within three or four days. If somebody promised you some magic healing results within three or four days, you need to be patient. Everything takes time. It could be three weeks, it could be four weeks. So in order to really see a change and to embrace that change, be more mindful with regard to taking small steps. And eventually that's going to lead to that giant leap for happiness and health. But in general, you know, it's small doses of making changes and then you will see it. And that also leads to another recommendation. Don't try to change too many things at the same time. So for instance, whether that's food related or whether that's workout related, don't start working out every day. That's definitely not a healthy solution right there. And also don't drastically change your food intake while you're starting to work out every day. So maybe try weaving in small changes and making those sm small changes small enough so that you know at the end which ones work and which ones you might have to modify a little bit. But I've had people, I'm also a fitness instructor that come to my workout classes and at the end, they're like waving me goodbye and say, see you tomorrow. And I said, well, if I do see you tomorrow, I hope I see you for a different type of exercise. So don't do a spin class or weightlifting class every day, but alternate them. Do the cardio on one day, the weightlifting on the other day. And then also the third day could be a rest day. Same with food. If you're trying new foods, maybe weave in those foods in a way that it seems still you're getting a rainbow and you're not getting tired of eating the same thing over and over again, just because you heard it's healthy. Try to still weave in foods that are familiar to you. So it becomes much more of a natural shift and you don't feel like depriving yourself or you need to do some things. It needs to be more easing into a change. That's why it's called embracing change because you're more adding it to your current and existing wellness routine. Yeah, I love that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. It's yeah, if you try to make too many changes at once, you definitely are headed for the recipe for disaster and having those changes not stick and not become lifelong habits, which is what you want to do. I know for me, when I, my, as far as my exercise routine goes, I try to rotate between swimming or doing, you know, like aerobic dance and Zumba and walking and things like that, rather than just doing everything the same every single day. And I found that that works pretty well too. So yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I always say to my clients, think about the food and the workouts, but also your mindfulness, which is another important tip that we have instead of, um, you know, just there is this one thing that you can think of. Oh, when I work out, I have to think of this particular thing. There's so many different options out there. Why, which is why this episode is very good, you know, with the title Embracing Change. Try to broaden your horizon a little bit because there might be things out there you haven't heard of in terms of foods or workouts or even mindfulness that will really help you and learn something new because it's at the end, it's just about learning new things, but also learning about yourself, what really works for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And so talking about the topic of mindfulness a little bit, you know, I've addressed that a little bit. I've had other guests mention that. What would you say is your biggest tip when it comes to embracing mindfulness? Yeah, I get that question all the time because I am a health and happiness coach and I frequently have completely overworked entrepreneurs that come and they say, I don't even know how to be happy anymore. I totally lost the ability in my in my, in my my life where I'm feeling something gives me joy. So what can you do to do that? And then I'm, I'm basically kind of coming back to the drawing board and I have some worksheets that we go through. And that basically we try to figure out, all right, so when you think of joy, right, what do you immediately associate that with? Okay, maybe joy is associated with family or with friends. 
So what do you do with them? Or maybe you're getting together for a dinner or you're getting together for games. So which of these elements could we weave back into your life that would do that? So mindfulness frequently is just associated with taking time out from stressful activities you do on a daily routine and coming back to something that really fills your cup. So you can't lead your life with like a half full, or if you are a more pessimistic oriented person with a half empty cup, you really have to fill your cup in between. You need those time outs for yourself to kind of withdraw if that's what you need and read or journal or meditate, or if you are frequently by yourself, maybe go into the social setting. So we all need that. And that's so important for the rest of our life and kind of like enriching it. So sometimes people say, well, when I think of mindfulness, I think of meditating and I tried that and it really didn't work. Not necessarily. Mindfulness just means that you focus on something that sparks joy and you focus on something that you feel resets where you are right now in terms of your stress response. And that is that could be so many different things. It could be drawings or creative things. It could be, you know, your cooking. It could be that walk or the workout, et cetera. It could be journaling. So a very much of an activity that kind of like just lets out what bothers you, just putting it on paper. And I like to put the pen on paper situation. Uh, mindfulness is also it could just be laying still and enjoying just the sounds of nature or enjoying your breathing. So trying like some breath um, exercises. So it it basically is just it's an activity that typically is very different from what you usually do. So when I say, for instance, a crossword, I don't expect that you go to the computer and you Google crossword. I would actually like that you do a crossword that's maybe on paper or maybe on your Kindle or something. So it's away from where you get maybe distracted with emails and notifications, et cetera. That's mindfulness in a nutshell. And it's so important because we tend to overschedule ourselves and we tend to feel we're always missing out on something that we totally disregard the mindfulness piece. But all in all, it's maybe the most important one because that one will really see big benefits if you schedule mindfulness breaks during the day. Absolutely, for sure. And I think from a lot of the research that I've read and from people I've talked to and from you in my own experience, I've noticed that not having any kind of mindfulness practice, just kind of getting overstressed, overworked, you name it, is at the root cause of why a lot of people end up with autoimmune disorders. And it's one of the reasons that a lot more women have them than men is because as women, we feel that burden of you know, whether we're the child bearing or the child rearing or whether we're the income provider or both or whatever it is we have to do. It's this constant go, 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 stress, 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 stress. And we do it till we can't take it anymore. We don't engage in mindfulness. We're not thinking twice about what we're doing and how we're living our life. And then boof, we end up with an autoimmune condition. And that's like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and that's when we get forced into slowing down. Completely. And it actually relates very well also to sleep. So mm -hmm. we tend to push ourselves and do one more thing and do one more thing. And then our sleep gets cut short. Well, sleep is actually such an important part of your wellness routine. So if you think we talked about the food, which is, you know, one pillar, we talked about the movement, which is another pillar. We talked about the mindfulness also one of the pillars and social health is one sleep is the fifth pillar and it might be the you know the one that's maybe most rejuvenating in terms of your body but also your mind and if you keep pushing yourself you cut down on the length of the sleep maybe it's even the quality of your sleep because until the last minute before you went to bed you used your computer you did stress and so you expect you just lay down your body shuts off not going to happen right so there's definitely a difference in male and females and how quickly you, you know, kind of can release the tension and the stress. Uh, the more you practice mindfulness, the more your body will actually be able to relax. And maybe it's just short breaks, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but it will also help the quality of your sleep at night. And in my research, I look a lot at obesity and what leads to the body and like starting a healthy digestion process. If you're cutting down on your sleep, 
typically those are people that tend to have a higher propensity of becoming overweight or obese because the body doesn't have enough time during the night to rejuvenate and start the digestion process. And then if people tend to get stay up longer, they might not eat necessarily healthy snacks before they go to bed either. So there is definitely a relationship. And so all of these, while it might sound like there's a lot, you know, you need to think about, don't take a lot of time. Five minutes are great for to maybe get that mindfulness piece in there. Try to work on getting to bed maybe just a little bit earlier. Half an hour is already amazing. And then, of course, with regard to the food and the exercise, it could just be small little changes you're weaving in. That's really the main thing. Uh, don't get stressed out about that. Just kind of like think of it as like little tidbits of joy you're sprinkling into your day. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. I do think that a lot of people don't associate or don't connect the importance of sleep with things like weight loss and autoimmune and stuff like that. They just... And once they realize that they're like, oh, <laughs> you know, if I actually got good, high quality, proper sleep, that might actually even help me with my weight, you know? Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So now let's talk a little bit as well, along with this embracing changes concept of, we mentioned a little bit, you were saying more plant-based foods are going to become a trend in 2024. What other kinds of trends do you think are out there that people might want to pay attention to? So we talked a lot about the mindfulness and along with the mindfulness, the mental health. So a lot of what we're going to see also is going to be embracing mushrooms more. And that is like the mushrooms you can just buy from farmers at the farmer's market, which is what I do here in California. So I purchase, for instance, a lion's mane mushroom at the farmer's market or blue oyster mushrooms. And those might be mushrooms you haven't seen before where you're kind of like used to like the general flavor of them a lot of them go with our first trend which was that plant-based eating they might taste very similar to say like um a seafood or my like a meaty substance and that means you can add those mushrooms when you for instance like quickly bake them in a pan this is what i usually do you can add them on top of a salad or with a vegetable to kind of maybe substitute them for a meat that you typically use and that's kind of what you brought up on Laura. it's a very natural way of substituting something in that's not highly processed it's something that you might not have tried before but there's also a lot of research that shows these mushrooms have immense focus power where they can really help you um, enhance your mental ability and there are actually mushrooms that might calm you down so they reduce your stress response and other ones that more add focus so I like lion's mane a lot it looks actually it's a white mushroom and it looks a little bit like um, a brain and that might help you know to remember that they are really good to enhance your mental power and your focus and there are other mushrooms that might be more like for easing tension and calming down. So chaga is um, also a good ingredient right there. They might help you more in like, you know, in the evening when you're winding down. And we will see more of these ingredients coming in, whether that's in a beverage, whether that's in a food product, in a lot of unexpected places. I've even seen ice cream that has different mushrooms in it oh. <laughs> because it helps uh, sleep, right? So it's going to be fun really exploring what's out there. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I've heard of things, you know, like mushroom teas, mushroom coffee type products, yeah. things like that. But mushrooms and ice cream is interesting. Hadn't heard of that one. But <laughs> A lot of times, um, you know, the flavors are quite pleasant. And it's something that if you think of ice cream, typically there's a lot of sugar in there, which is not necessarily beneficial if you have an autoimmune disease. And so having maybe some more beneficial factors like the mushroom in there will kind of maybe allow you to reduce sugar content and it will make it much more of a healing food item, which is amazing if you think of ice cream that way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And mushrooms in and of themselves are really high in selenium, which if you have any kind of a thyroid problem, like with me where I have a Hashimoto's, I like to eat mushrooms pretty frequently and I find that that really helps with that high selenium count too. So that's always really good too. Correct. And vitamin D, which a lot of females are deficient in vitamin D. So they will help with that as well. That's awesome. That's interesting. Okay. So anything else that you would like to share other than, of course, you know, we'll include your contact information, how people can get in touch with you. Anything else that I didn't talk about that you think is important to share with people about this concept of embracing changes? 
Well, what I always encourage people to do is, um, I talked earlier about keeping the open mind. And um, what's also fun is kind of like combining some of these pillars. So on my blog, I have a downloadable PDF that you can personalize yourself and figure out how you're weaving in each pillar each day. Of course, I work with clients one-on-one. -on -one, so I have one-on-one -on -one coaching I'm also using a virtual program that I created myself that's called Journey to Wellness because that's really what it's all about. It's a journey. Our bodies are changing. We are changing. And you kind of just have to embrace that change that it's an ongoing process. There's never like the, oh, here's my goal. I reached it. I'm done. It's not happening that way. Um, we're changing. And that means that you also your, your goals are where you want to be in your journey change. So I would be happy to reach out, uh, to have you reach out to me and kind of ask any questions you might have or work with me one-on-one -on -one and help you to get to that journey. So I could be your accountability partner, so to speak, and help you and support you in that way. I've had lots of clients that struggled with various autoimmune diseases and will kind of make it very customized so it fits your own personal needs. Awesome. So I would be happy to do that. Yeah. Well, so we will include uh, in the show notes a link to your website where people can get in touch with you. Uh, as far as social media goes, what's the social media site that you use the most, do you think? Um, I use um, hello happy hello.happy.nest is my Instagram account. Okay. So find me on Instagram. I post a little bit every day, a little video, a little um, suggestion recipes are also on my blog which is hellohappynest.com and uh, that in general is also youtube videos that are also available on my blog as well as on my website where i'm showing different workouts and different ways that i'm cooking and using different foods so i would love for you to check those out as well awesome cool we will do that well thanks so much for joining us christian and we will link those to the low so everybody go and check those out and catch base with her and Let's all start this new journey of 2024 by embracing changes and becoming our best, healthy, happy self on our journey to autoimmune healing.